Hello everyone. It's a great honor to be able to speak about this opportunity titled Self-Management Techniques as a Non-Pharmacological Treatment for Irritable Power Syndrome. Before we start, we'd like to thank President Chiharu Kubo for inviting us to speak today. Irritable bowel syndrome is a disorder of chronic abdominal pain and abnormal bowel movements. These symptoms often come and go. This chronic condition is required long-term management. People with IBS often interfere with daily life. However, for some people, certain lifestyle habits can help manage symptoms. We are developing non-drug intervention for people with IBS to modify their lifestyle and relieve their symptoms. In this symposium, we will report and discuss four research results on the development of attention bias modification, ABM, and decoded neurofeedback, DECNEF therapy, as a method of transforming people's cognition with IBS. We hope these findings will help people with IBS to self-manage their symptoms on a daily living. The first speaker is myself, Hamaguchi, from Japan. The title is The Effect of Physical Activity on Gastrointestinal Symptoms of IBS Among Younger People. Abdominal symptoms in IBS are closely linked to psychological stress, the combined functioning of intestinal motor, sensory, and central nervous activities is thought to be an important factor in the development of IBS symptoms. To help us understand the standard management of IBS, the guideline development Japanese committee suggested the clinical algorithm. Considering the preference of some patients who prefer non-drug management, diet and physical activity, this lifestyle modification located in the initial management. There is some evidence that increased physical activity improves GI symptoms in IBS. Physically active patients with IBS will face less symptoms deterioration compared with physically inactive patients. Thus, physical activity should be used as a primary treatment modality for IBS. Here, physical activity has been found to improve the symptom of IBS. Dr. Johannesson et al. reported physically active patients with IBS were improved symptoms compared with physically inactive patients after 12-week intervention. Dr. Kattner et al. reported a brief yoga pause and breathing intervention was feasible and safe adjunctive treatment for young people with IBS, leading to benefits in pain, intensity, and GI symptoms. Dr. Daraye et al. also examined the feasibility and effect of an exercise intervention on quality of life and the intervalable symptoms using a randomized control trial methodology. I'd like to draw your attention to whether physical activity should be used as a primary treatment modality for IBS. We reported data found that how much momentum of daily activity might be effective to improve gastrointestinal symptoms. The aim of our study was to investigate the relationship between gastrointestinal symptoms and physical activity among young people with IBS. Participants were 101 young adults with IBS in this survey. Participants were examined by gastrointestinal symptom rating scale 
GSRS and one week measurement using a pedometer. To determine the association between GSRS score and the pedometer counts, ordered logistic modeling analysis was used. The principle of ordered logistic modeling is to fit the probability of multiple dichotomous response to a linear model. As you can see, scatter plot of GSRS score and locomotor activity in young adults of IBS. Gastrointestinal symptom rating scale score max 7 indicates very severe discomfort. Score 1 is no discomfort at all. Green dots were realigned GSRS score and locomotor activity among IBS. Logistic curve separated 0.5 moderately severe discomfort from 0.2 broken line minor discomfort that separated 0.5 from 4 solid green line and that separated 0.4 from 3 chain blue line were in a stepwise fashion fit. To reach at least 50% probability for GSRS score, separated 0.5 from 4, indicated that daily locomotor activity was 9,500 steps. Similarly, the probability of GSRS score separated 0.5 from 4 was 78% at least 4,000 steps per day. In this survey, we undertook an investigation of the relation between GI symptoms and the amount of daily activity by applying ordered logistic modeling to data collected from patients with IBS. Our results indicated that GI symptoms and locomotor activity were correlated and the threshold level of locomotor activity existed that could predict GI symptoms in IBS. Especially, several lines of research have characterized the relation between GI symptoms and exercise. We have been able to detect independence probabilities for symptoms of IBS in relationship to locomotor activity. I'm now going to give a brief summary of what we have covered were probably multiple mechanisms involved in the improvement of IBS symptoms via increased physical activity. Dr. Bauria reported that mild physical activity enhances intestinal gas clearance and induced symptoms in patients with bloating. Dr. Dainese et al. also reported gut transit of intralaminal gas is enhanced by mild physical activity such as pedaling in healthy subjects. Dr. Song reported uh, colon transit time according to the physical activity level in adults. Bushraba also reported that uh, in middle-aged inactive subject with the symptom of chronic constipation, it's advisable to promote 30 minutes walk daily to locomotor activity. I'm now going to give a brief summary of what we have covered were probably multiple mechanisms, probably multiple mechanisms involved in the improvement of IBS symptoms via increased probably multiple mechanisms involved in the improvement of IBS symptoms via increased physical activity. Dr. Bauria reported that mild physical activity enhances intestinal gas clearance and induced symptoms in patients with bloating. Dr. Bauria reported that mild physical activity enhances intestinal gas clearance and induced 
symptoms in patients with bloating. Dr. Dainese et al. also reported gut transit of intralaminal gas is enhanced by mild physical activity such as pedaling. I cannot hear uh, sound. Please start uh, sound, sound. I cannot hear a sound. Okay, uh, I will share my computer screen with you.
Thank you for inviting me to this symposium. I would also like to thank Professor Kubo for giving me the opportunity to make a presentation. I will announce it. Background. First, I will explain the depressive symptoms after stroke. About 30% stroke patients have depressive symptoms. PSD patients have more severe disabilities than those without PSD, and they affect activities of daily living and quality of life. Stroke patients with high physical activity have less depression. Depressive symptoms have also disappeared when cognitive function is restored by drug therapy. Non-pharmacotherapy, cognitive behavioral therapy for PSD patients improves depressive symptoms. From this fact, it is considered that increasing the amount of physical activity and cognitive function can reduce the depressive symptoms after small. And there is an attention bias in the factors that affect a cognitive behavior. Attention bias is the inclination of attention to negative or positive stimuli. AB has two characteristics. It is easier to pay attention toward negative stimuli. The other cannot take their attention away from the negative stimuli. These characteristics make people be in a bad mood. The definition of positive effect is focuses on positive rather than negative stimuli and adjust emotions. Elderly people with negative moods pay more attention to positive than negative stimuli. The strength of the positive effect diminishes as the load of cognitive processing increases. If PSD patients have a positive effect, it is suspected that they tend to choose positive or neutral stimuli to avoid negative stimuli. Elderly people have longer cognitive processing time or motor reaction time than younger people. RTs in patients with mild cognitive impairment have been shown to be longer than those in aged matched controllers. When cognitive function affects reaction time, it is unclear whether depressive symptoms and or cognitive function in individuals with hemolysis affect RT. Hypothesis Previous studies have shown that negative attention bias is more focused on negative stimuli. This is common in young. On the other hand, the attention bias of the elderly shown positive effect, so it is known that a neutral stimulus is safe to avoid negative stimuli. However, there are no reports of attentional bias in stroke patients, and its characteristics are unknown. Therefore, the first hypothesis of this study was that the response time for selecting neutral stimuli for post-stroke depressive patients was shorter than that for non-depressive patients. The second hypothesis is that there is no difference in reaction time for selecting neutral stimulus depending on the presence or absence of depressive symptom in stroke patients with mild cognitive impairment. In stroke patients without mild cognitive impairment, the reaction time for selecting neutral stimuli for patients with depressive symptoms was shorter than that for patients with non-depressive symptoms. It is possible that the reaction time is delayed in people with mild cognitive impairment. Since patients with depressive symptoms with cognitive decline do not exert a positive effect, we hypothesis that there would be no difference in reaction time between the presence and absence of depressive symptoms. We hypothesis that depressive symptoms would have a positive effect and shortened reaction time in people without mild cognitive impairment. Method The study design used a cross-sectional study 
participants, stroke patients were admitted to convalescent rehabilitation hospital. The inclusion criteria were the diagnosis of stroke, the ability to communicate, and MMSC score of 24 or higher. The exclusion criteria was that the subject had a history of depression before the onset of stroke, difficulties to discriminate between the facial images. I will explain the experimental procedure. Before the start of the experiment, the score of MMSE, FIM, and BRS were obtained from the medical records. After that, I explain the research contents and listen to BDI and POMS. Next, we measure the attention bias. I will explain the psychological test. Depressive symptoms were measured using the Japanese version of back depression inventory second edition. It had a history of depression before the onset of stroke. Difficulties to discriminate between the facial images. I will explain the experimental procedure. Before the start of the experiment, the score of MMSE, FIM, and BRS were obtained from the medical records. After that, I explain the research contents and listen to BDI and POMS. Next, we measure the attention bias. I will explain the psychological test. Depressive symptoms were measured using the Japanese version of back depression inventory second edition and used to determine the presence or absence of depressive symptoms. Four mood states other than depressive symptoms. I will explain the experimental procedure. Before the start of the experiment, the score of MMSE FIM and BRS were obtained from the medical records. After that, I explained the research contents and listened to BDI and POMS. Next, we measure the attention bias. I will explain the psychological test. Depressive symptoms were measured using the Japanese version of back depression inventory second edition. We used to determine the presence or absence of depressive symptoms. Four mood states other than depressive symptoms. The Japanese version of profile or mood state short version. Attention bias was measured using a laptop computer and a dedicated controller. In one time session, as a stress management education, step one was to understand that concept is very difficult to stress. Step two was to be aware of the stress reactions of oneself by psychological education for 15 minutes. Step three was to acquire the stress point by theory and practice
Стрельцы Understanding this report the theories about yoga exercises. Все, ма. Мне ни не было звука все это время. Okay. In 15 patients had depressive symptoms and 46 were no depressive symptoms. It is table showing the characteristics of the target stroke patients by comparing with or without depressive blood. The baby eyes for depressive symptoms were significantly higher in the depressive symptom group, and the MMSC score for cognitive function was significantly higher in the non depressive group. No significant difference was found in other patients. To the area and make a suitable with their form for the X-Mine. For hypothesis one, we use the student one to test to compare reaction times for setting neutral stimuli with and without the clothing symptom. The catalysis shows reaction times. Result between the two groups. The blood subject section hypothesis two is shown. The MMSC score was divided into the groups according to the width and without MCI. And 60 patients have MCI and 45 were non MCI. After that, the presence of a sense of depressive symptom was determined using the PDI. Hypothesis 2 was four groups comprising based on the presence or absence of depression and MCI. It is table showing the characteristics of the patients by comparing the four groups. There was a significant main effect on the blessing symptom POMS subscale cognitive function. BDI showed to the score of the significantly higher in the presence of depression. POMS subscale tension high anxiety, depression, and more. Today shows the tension anxiety only because this score is important for attention bias. Those without MCI who had depression have significantly higher tension anxiety.
and that is more than those without NCI in the non depressed MMS score was significantly lower in the presence of depression with NCI group. On the other hand, in people without NCI, it depends no MMS. This table results are comparing the reaction time between the four groups. There was no significant interaction between function and depressive symptoms. And there was no significant male effect on the depressive symptom, but have cardio function. Those without MC. In addition, comparing of reaction time between the four groups, there was no significant male effect on the depressive symptom, but have cardio function. Those without MC. In addition, comparing of reaction time between the four groups, there was no significant male effect on the depressive symptom, but have cardio function. Those without MC. In addition, comparing of reaction time between the four groups, there was no significant male effect on the depressive symptom, but have cardio function. In the study, the attention bias was not different from the presence of a sense of depressive symptom. The point of function of the depressive symptom group was lower than that of the non-depressive one. It has been reported that the reaction time of MCI patients has been longer than healthy adults, and the motor response is slow. So the reaction time for the attention bias detection is delayed. These results are similar to a previous study conducted face-to-face. And stroke patients without MCI who had depressive symptoms had a shorter reaction time to neutral stimuli than those who did not have depressive symptoms. This is similar to the elderly people with depressive I will explain the limitation of this research. Attention bias is known to be affected by psychological state. Attention bias might be severely due to psychological change in the process of stroke recovery. The second problem is many previous studies have been conducted using the dot plot task. So we will be necessary to be obtained the dot plot task. Finally, there is a problem for sample size. Finally, from the result of this study, cognitive decline causes prolonged reaction time in stroke patients. It was also suggested that patients with post-stroke depressive symptoms without MCI have an additional bias to avoid bad stimulus. This time it's not a big state. However, if this data is used as a reference for a big treatment, it is expected that age and the presence of cells of positive effect will also affect IBS. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for this opportunity to present our research. The, our study title is the investigation of changing effects of the psychological and psychological status of healthy subjects. In recent years, even in Japan, where Western medicine has failed in the importance of preventive medicine has finally come to recognize. However, in fact, the importance of preventive medicine has already been shown in the Indian philosophical books, Ayurveda, meaning the science of life and the This is a diagram showing the concept of health and illness as presented in Ayurveda, along with other representative medical concepts. In Chinese medicine, there is a classification of Western medicine. It can be seen that the health and illness process considered in Ayurveda are very finely categorized. Also, the ancient Indian understood human existence as follows. The concept is called quintessential. The idea is that humans are made up of high a special concept in Indian context. In order from the outside body, a 
I explain directly uh, background. Can you hear voice? I guess it's associated with the dysfunction of the brain gut interaction characterized by chronic recurrent abdominal pain and altered bowel movement. In addition, IBS patient frequently present with symptoms associated with anxiety, depression, and somatization. These symptoms affect the quality of life of IBS patients and the severity of uh, abdominal symptoms in IBS is predictor of reduced quality of life in relation to physical health. The symptom severity can be evaluated according to the IBS subtype ROMA4 criteria to understand the pathophysiological mechanism accurately. Uh, next is the pattern of brain activity in people with IBS. Abdominal pain is subjective because this signal from the abdomen undergo processing in the brain. However, brain research suggests that gastrointestinal hypersensitivity is the diagnostic marker of IBS. Uh, the reason is IBS patient from a distinctive default motor network in addition, weak functional connectivity between the dorsolateral and medial prefrontal cortices have been found. Attempt to normalize electroencephalogram of IBS symptoms have also achieved results and are attracting attention. From this point, we are preparing to develop intervention to normalize brain activity to alleviate symptoms in IBS patients. That it we call that the neural network thickness. Uh, we used machine learning to uh, discriminate uh, patterns of brain activity in people with IBS. As indicated, previously, the pattern of IBS brain activity is characteristic. In machine learning algorithms, the brain activity associated with a characteristic phenomenon is detected and examined to create a classifier that can discriminate between disease and healthy groups. Because the default mode network is closely associated with the uh, recognition process of visceral perception, this function can create a new objective scale for evaluating abdominal pain and verifying the visibility of the neck. Therefore, the purpose of this study was to verify the usefulness of a classifier as a basis for the development of the by analyzing easy data obtained from symptomatic and asymptomatic patients with IBS. Uh, this study was conducted in cross-sectional study design. Participants were right-handed universal students aged 18 and over, excluded uh, psychiatric disorder, functional gastrointestinal disease. Experimental protocol is shown in panel A2 C. First A, a flowchart of the study protocol from the recruitment of participants to EEG data analysis. Participants assessed for the presence of IBS symptoms are subjected to EEG examination. And the target frequency bands of the EEG data are extracted by fast fluid transformation. Second panel B, a subvector machine is used to to create a classifier that can discriminate the EEG patterns of participants with and without IBS symptoms using machine learning. And the alpha and beta bands of the frequency analyzed EEG data. Third panel C. Validation of the discrimination accuracy of the classifier for IBS symptoms. EEG test data are discriminated by the classifier, and the discrimination accuracy between patients with and without IBS is calculated. Я что с ними сейчас еще общаться должен, что ли? 
EEG data were measured according to the 1020 international system. EEG data were visually examined to confirm the absence of biological artifacts and sudden EEG abnormalities. And then analyzed using an EMSE application implemented on a computer. Data were recorded for 10 minutes, and those in the time window of 120 to 240 seconds were analyzed. Panel B uh, shows alpha and beta bands during analysis. A support vector machine are supervised machine learning methods for uh, methods used for, for classification for regression. In this study, extended to construct nonlinear discriminant function using a kernel In this example, here is the precision boundary. The discriminative power of the classifier was evaluated using a bootstrap data set. We examined whether the support vector machine classification model established in the training data set could discriminate the EEG of the test data between participants with and without IBS. Next, we showed the results. Uh, in total, the EEG data of 52 participants were analyzed. The groups based on IBS symptoms were as follows 9 IBSC, 6 IBSD, 7 IBSM, and 6 IBSU. In addition, these are the same guys who are in the зачем a comparison of the power percentage of the alpha and beta bands. Also, hot analysis after MANOVA test showing channels with a significant different. Uh, here are the significant different. The next is the ability of the support vector machine classifier to uh, differentiate AEG data by ABS symptoms. The alpha and beta bands of each measurement region are shown. As calculated by analyzing the EEG depth, the X and Y axis indicate the power percentage in the alpha and beta bands, respectively, and the number indicates the number of plots for each frequency band. A higher z axis area indicates the IBS group, and a lower z axis area indicates the non IBS group. And that is the cutoff point for discriminating the presence of IBS. Finally, evaluation of the discriminative ability of the support vector machine classifier for each brain region. Yeah, what, the the classifier in the electroencephalography channels in the frontal, parietal, and the occipital region. A 3D discrimination map for each brain region and accuracy rate are shown. The graph shows the number of discrimination trials and the accuracy rate. And the accuracy rate of the whole brain is shown as a reference. The accuracy rate was partic uh, particularly high in frontal region. Okay. Okay, thank you, Dr. Higuchi, uh, for your excellent and interesting presentation. Uh, I'm very surprised about the so the analyzing EEG power spectra have reported to beta power enhanced and alpha power attenuation in IBA. Uh, conclusions, the result of this study suggests that EEG data can be used to determine the presence or absence of IBS symptoms. With the IBS classifier, EEG may help provide feedback regarding the presence or absence of symptoms to patients, which is a bit for developing 
Self Management Strategy for IBS. Thank you for your attention. We are therapies on employee stress management. Dr. Murakami, please. Thank you for joining my presentation. Dr. Murakami, let me start my report. A study on the effectiveness of yoga therapy on employees' stress management. This chart shows the percentage of workers who have strong anxiety, suffering, and stress related with working life. We can easily notice the number of percentage is more than half workers. It means dealing with worker stress is an urgent social issue. Based upon this situation, Japanese government recommended similar self-care resources. Thank you, everyone. The scientific level of this presentation is very, very nice. So, I'm very satisfied to listen to the presentations of all presenters. And uh, I would like to listen to uh, Professor Tayama's presentations, who is using uh, his own computer on the screen. If possible, uh, attendant of the webinar, please let Professor Tayama to use his own computer on the screen. Dr. Tayama, another way to, you know, reset the presenter's status is uh, just log out uh, once from this webinar and re-enter this webinar again. And uh, yesterday, yeah, yesterday I had a very similar problem, but it resets after the re-entering to the webinar. ウェビナーの方で聞こえないのかな。ズームで聞いてきましょうか。あ、音声が入らないね。えっと、たくさんごめん、あの、えっと、ズームで入ってくれる。ズームで音を出してくれる。今聞こえますね。今聞こえます。ウェビナー1回入り直しましてます。オッケー。ちょっとウェビナーで入り直。福田先生おっしゃったように、あの、昨日のもあったようなんで、また入り直したんですけど、それでもできないです。ズームで26にしてるからでしょうかね。切って